Hello everybody, it is June 6th, we just finished another, uh, it was it was a decent day on the stock market. The Dow Jones was up 0.05, the S&P was up 0.30, the Nasdaq was up 0.28, and the Russell was up 0.46. Those don't sound like bad numbers, but they were a little disappointing, seeing that all of them at one point were up over 1% and lost all those gains. Now, I do continue to warn everybody we still have um, weakness in the market. I still want to caution everybody that typical midterm election years, the low of the year does come in the second half of the year. This right here is a chart of the S&P 500. Uh, and this has every year since 1946 as an average right here on the black line which doesn't look bad, but this isn't just a regular year. This is a midterm election year, and it's not just a midterm election year. It's a Democrat first year term midterm election year. And yes, that matters. That affects the market. And it's usually the worst year of any possible combination. And you can see right here, we're, we're barely approaching June. Traditionally in June, we have a little attempted rally. You could see it there. We had a bigger one here because our movements this year are much bigger than in previous years. But the beginning movement in June typically fails and it makes another low. So, yes, historically, we're looking at a new low in June. And then we have a little bit of a rally through July, August, and then some more down movement finish off in October, which is typically a, one of the worst months of the year. Um, it usually will make the lowest low of the year on a midterm election year. And from that point, we rally. Now that's historical. That's, that doesn't mean that's what's going to happen this year. But that's what I'm preparing for, and that's what I'm ready for. And I will play this market with the mentality that we're going to go down to sideways between now and October. And let's go over some of the other reasons why I say that. Uh, looking at the SPY, you could see we opened really high up this morning. This is the five-minute chart, and then from the very beginning, the bears came in and just sold it off. We try to come back and they sold it off. We try to come back and they sold it off. That's, that just seems to be what's happening uh, with the SPY, not just on the intraday, but on the daily. Uh, it's, 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 that's the story that we're playing right now. Now, <clears throat> what I was cautioning everybody uh, on the Discord today was that we're getting a lot of sideways movements. You could see here sideways movement. Uh, the first sideways movement of the year was in February and it was followed by a downtrend. Then we had sideways movement followed by a downtrend. Sideways movement followed by a downtrend. Is this sideways movement right here going to be followed by a downtrend? It's possible. We're in a range. If we break over 418 and push to that 50-day moving average, then I would feel more comfortable saying that we're going to go to an uptrend. Now, I keep hearing a lot of people saying consolidation, consolidation, and then they're making the assumption that it's going to go to the upside because traditionally that's what happens. So if I put the S&P chart right here on a weekly basis, you can see consolidation followed by an uptrend, consolidation followed by an uptrend, consolidation followed by an uptrend. It just happens over and over. Now, don't confuse this movement to what's happening over here. Because what's happening over here is an uptrend. When you're in an uptrend, your consolidation moves to an up movement after the consolidation. When you're in a downtrend, consolidation is followed by a down movement. You're always going to follow the same movement until you break out of the channel. But we're far from breaking out of this channel. Uh, this, this sideways consolidation as I heard people calling it is indicative of a down movement coming soon now I don't want a down movement I, I prefer to play the upside because I do hold a long portfolio 
I, I'm gonna I'm gonna sell the market if it does continue down I'm, I'm gonna make money day trading playing futures to the downside if it if we do break to the downside but the bear case truthfully is looking stronger we're trying to pull away from this 20-day moving average uh, I did see that this 20-day moving average is starting to flatten out which is positive but it it really looks to me like we're really trying to push down towards this 20-day uh, moving average remember again this week on Friday we have triple witching uh, which means the futures contracts expire for the quarter the uh, options contracts expire for the quarter uh, we also have the CPI being read on Friday so we are expecting a lot of volatility this this week specifically on Friday and to top things off to put the little cherry on top our max pain number for the week is 400 last week the max pain was at 410 and we closed at 410 this this week the max pain is at 400 and if we close at 400 that means we're going to break this little downtrend, this little sideways consolidation area. If we close at 400, we're going to break it to the downside and we're going to go below that. Not what I want to see, but, you know, being a realist, that's more than likely what's going to happen. Uh, some of the stronger stocks in the market, just, just to show you guys an idea of what I'm talking about, there's the 20 day line and it, Apple is just bouncing on that 20 day line. Tesla just bouncing on that 20 day line. It just keeps coming back to the 20 day line and keeps getting rejected there. That just seems to be the trend that's happening right now and we can't seem to break it. Now, um, one, one thing that, that I do do a lot and I encourage you guys to do the same is I do cruddy up my charts a lot. And here we have 11 bars, 8% movement, oops. 11 bars, 8% movement. Uh, oh, from there to there. 12 bars, 7.5% movement. Twelve bars, seven and a half percent movement. And right here we have ten bars, nine and a half percent movement. Uh, the only reason I'm showing you this is because I do want you to understand when it comes to time, we have fulfilled the time on this rally when it comes to price we have fulfilled the price on this rally 11 bars 10.9 10 bars 9.5 so we have the right amount of bars the right amount of percentage in order for to either turn around or pop up this consolidation is normal but it's it's a signal that we're about to continue the trend not that we're about to break the trend um, so brace yourself uh, I do think it's going to be a new low uh, before a new high hope this helps you um, by all means ask any questions on the discord uh, I've been a little quiet lately because I've been my fingers been quick on the trigger hitting day trades, getting in and out, trying to maximize as much profit with this volatility that we've had. But when I'm selling options, they're way out of the money and I'm not buying for swing trades. That's just not in the cards right now. Um, everything is a short trade. I'm playing both upside and downside. Everything's a short trade, everything's small profits. And that's the way I'm keeping myself profitable. Uh, another way to do it right now is to just uh, sell puts on energy that seems to be working well but I don't trust energy I don't like energy uh, so I've been staying away from energy but that's an option for you guys that that like energy just just keep playing the energy it doesn't seem to be getting losing any steam right now uh, today it was the worst second worst performing sector in the market consumer discretionary was the best 
but energy broke out of its channel and it looks like it's going to continue strong until something significant happens in our economy um, again have a good day have a good night we'll speak to you tomorrow uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up uh, subscribe to the channel share it with your friends we're really trying to uh, push this channel to uh, help people navigate the market so help us out with that and have a great day